And here we go. Down the road we go. Wednesday, 7th day of March 2018. This is Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And we say good morning to you. And thanks for starting your day with us here on the NCW Life Channel. I am Dan Koontz, your host for the next hour. Steve Hare, our news director to my media left. Cat in control. And a good Wednesday to you. We made it to Wednesday, the hump day. The hump day. Yeah. The hump day. And then from this four point forward, it's closer to the weekend than it was to the beginning. We're almost to spring. We're almost to baseball season. We have a working weekend, though, this weekend, don't yeah, we? Yeah. We're going to be at the KPQ Home Expo. In fact, that's the topic of conversation today. Uh, Michelle Collins from uh, Cherry Creek Media will be in to talk about the KPQ Expo. Uh, the 41st KPQ Expo That's right. is this weekend at the Town Toyota Center. That'll be the topic of conversation. We taped that uh, conversation yesterday. We'll play it for you today. Outside of that, the usual shenanigans apply. You got quite a bit of news to get to. We do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, a lot of breaking news this morning. So good. Uh, and we have uh, finally have the answer to the Billy Goat Mountain yes, situation we that we've talked about. That we'll get to that in just a couple of minutes as well. When Angie Wild. They won last night. They're up three games to none now over the Merritt Centennials. They took game three up in Merritt. They can wrap the whole thing up tonight with a victory in game four by themselves and a couple of extra days of rest and get ready for the next round of the BCHL playoffs. We have highlights from last night's dramatic victory. They took a... Promise? Yeah, they had a huge... Yeah, promise. Inside story. Uh, they had a huge lead last night against Merritt. And Merritt chipped away and came back and, and the Wild had to hold on. But they did. They got the W and that's good news. Ichiro... Not quite in camp yet. He's still in Seattle. I don't, we talked about this around the bullpen yesterday. I'm not sure, and I agree with Eric on this. Eric mentioned this briefly when we were talking about it. This is, I think, more of a marketing ploy than Ichiro actually helping the Mariners improve and become a better team. I just he's, he's, a, he's an icon in the Pacific Northwest. There's no question about that. I think it's about getting rear ends and seats as much as it is well, anything it may else. Maybe the man is still very functional, more than functional. The man can still hit, you know, last year at 43 yeah. years old and batting 255. Yeah. That's not too bad, if you ask me. That's not too bad. But as a lot of baseball pundits have mentioned, and I, <clears throat> I, I thought about this yesterday, I was reading columns and various people who were smarter about this than I am, and that's usually my default. Um, if he didn't sign with the Mariners, because the Mariners have some injuries, you know, well, they got, they the they got some problems. Too, which is the problem. um, but if it wasn't the Mariners, it wouldn't be anybody. I mean, he was just, there's a lot of free agents who are just sitting around, staying in shape, waiting for that phone to ring to go join a major league roster. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And the, Melody the, Cabrera, one of them. Yeah, so. that's true. That's another one. But the, the, the vast majority of, of people who, I, who have chimed in on this Holy Churro thing, I think their, their point has merit in that if he didn't sign with the Mariners, he, his Major League Baseball career would probably be done because right. nobody, nobody else was knocking on his door. You know, um, and he's, let's face it, he's not going to come cheap. When you're a 42 year old veteran and you've been in Major League Baseball for 18 years, you're not going to come. Uh, you're not going to come cheap. You're going to be. It's going to be a chunk of change. And I think he's coming with that, uh, with his eyes wide open on that. You mm -hmm. know, he's going to be a utility player basically, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and a replacement until they can get the rest of their. Uh, first string outfield uh, recovered from injuries because I think three out of the four starters are injured right no, now. They're banged up. Yeah. They're banged up. So they need it. And uh, I'll tell you what, I have a lot of trust in each row. I, I know you do. I just, I can't get past the fact I think it's a, <clears throat> I think it's a marketing ploy. I really. Well, I, I don't think it's similar to the situation with Griffey when they brought him back. Yeah. You know, after yeah. he retired, which mm -hmm. is obviously just an image thing. And then, mm -hmm. But uh, I'd like to see him retire as a Mariner. Oh, I think we all do. Yeah. We all do. There's no question about that. He's been bouncing around. Of course, he was a Yankee for a while. Yeah. I had no problems with that. Ended up in Miami. Didn't really play much last year uh, with the Miami Marlins. He was kind of a in and out kind of a guy. Mm -hmm. Mostly a pinch hitter. Of course, they don't have a designated hitter in the, in the National League. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Well, he, he's lost a few steps. Probably mm -hmm. doesn't have the arm that he did back when he played for the Mariners the first. But the guy can still hit. And uh, that is, uh, and, and from what I understand, from what I've been reading, a lot of the players are excited about getting him back, especially the younger players who see him as maybe a coach and a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I think he's matured also as a player and a teammate. Yeah, that you could very well be right. Yeah. And maybe a little fun fact about Ichiro, and a lot of people don't know this, he's a natural right-handed person. Mm -hmm. He taught himself to bat left-handed because he got that extra two and a half steps towards first base. That's right. So, yeah. yeah, it's actually it's one of those unique little things about each hero. Oh, and the man can, and, and, bant, can bunt. Yeah, and know. disciplined. He's a very, very disciplined uh, player. The only time I kind of got mad at him is when he bunted with two outs and a man on second. So, I, you know, I, 
<laughs> got worried about that. Oh, five and a half minutes after the hour. Let's take you around North Central Washington with our Valley View cameras on this Wednesday. Beautiful morning today. Get out and enjoy this morning because the clouds oh. will be thickening up, Steve, as we walk our way through this Wednesday. Gorgeous Boy, view. The uh, river that's a mirror this morning. Look at that, beautiful. That is our cross camera, which always bats lead off when it is available. Sometimes it's not working and sometimes it's completely fogged over and you can't see anything out of it, but not the case today. Gorgeous, gorgeous view of the greater Wenatchee Valley, courtesy of Localtel SkyFi High Speed Wireless Network Camera 2. Will take us to, that is um, looking up Lake Chelan. That's Green's Knob. That's the last camera on our way up to the North Cascades. To the North Cascades. So you go around the bend and you're on your way to Stahican. A beautiful view up there and still quite a bit of snow in that area. When I go up to Lake Chelan I, and I get out in a boat, I like to go as far northwest as possible to get away from the choppy waters and the boats and the jet skis, mm -hmm. jet skis and get up there where it's very quiet and peaceful and there's little uh, areas where you can pull off and enjoy a nice picnic. It's much quieter up in that area. Looks similar to our Oslo cam, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good morning, Norway. Thanks for joining us. Camera three will take us to... Well, it's the nighttime image from the... Oh, no. That is Monument. Beautiful yeah, shot of Monument. Down now, you can see the there's, there's more clouds printer. there. Hey, where's, what happened to my, my shack? Yeah, what happened to your, your summer home? What happened to my summer like home there? Yeah, it's to the right, okay. It's to the right. Good morning, Quincy. Opportunities are unlimited out there. In beautiful Quincy, Washington. Out of, look, see the bird fly by? I sure did. That was kind of cool. Beautiful view up there. And you can still see a little leftover from that burn that they had last summer. You remember that? They had mm -hmm. that little uh, brush fire. Looks like it's all grown back. In that area. And finally, I think we got Billy Goat up and running today. Yeah. And we now, he, we, now we, we discovered something, or somebody informed us of something that we asked earlier. Yes, uh, we all remember Candy, Candy Rognes, who yeah. was our receptionist, her husband Rod chimed in via email because I was asking people what that mountain is way it's almost right in the middle of your camera there, there it is we're going to zoom in it's sticking above the cloud cover there, there you is. go and uh, Rod Rognes uh, sent me uh, an email and he thinks and I'm pretty sure that he's right that is Mount Kalispell that's Kalispell with a C elevation 6,700 and 80 feet as part of the Selkirk range which has a number of mountains Selkirk about, okay it has a number of mountains about 5,000 to 5,500 feet, and there's one mountain, Mount Kalispell, that juts out uh, an additional 1,000 feet or so. So Mount Kalispell at an elevation of 6780, that's got to be it. Mm. And as the crow flies, Steve, that's about 240 miles from that camera. All right, so we're getting close then to the what? Uh, close to the Canadian border. Can well, Canadian and the Idaho, I think, yeah. Yeah. Selkirk Range goes yep, through Idaho. Yep. Yeah. So thank you very much, Rod Rognes, for solving the mystery of what that little bump is. Yeah, that's wonderful. So that's pretty cool. He contacted cool. us through our uh, email? or was Yeah, it he, he, do, he went on the contact us thing, and of course we got it, and then uh, it started a chain, and then um, he sent me, he also uh, linked me to a really cool website where he discovered all this out. It's really neat. I, I'm not going to tell you right now because I can't remember, but it's it's pretty cool. It's one of those websites you start playing with, and yeah. before you know it, 45 minutes has passed, and you <laughs> haven't gotten anything done. It's a tool, not it's a, a toy. That's right, it's a tool, yeah. not a toy. Eight and a half minutes after the hour on this Wednesday, your weather forecast, courtesy of the National Weather Service. That way, if you don't like it, you can blame the government. Sunshine this morning, clouds this afternoon, Steve. High of about 50. That's oh. about normal. And then a w little bitty, witty, witty, bitty little system is going to come in. But it's going to give us a chance of snow. We could get a half an inch of snow overnight tonight into it's Thursday on. morning. It's in the forecast. Don't take a bet? No. I never, never bet on the weather, ever. Never, never play cards with a guy named Doc and never bet on the weather. And don't spit in the wind and don't pull the mask off the old Lone Ranger and don't mess around with Jim. So we could get a half an inch of, of snow possible Wednesday into Thursday. We can wake up tomorrow for your morning commute with a little bit of light snow. It's going to be gone Johnson by Thursday mid-morning because you can see the high of 52 degrees there. And then a gorgeous weekend. Look at that. Wow. High pressure comes back. Highs will be in the 50s. If you're heading over the Puget Sound area, I've, I've said this before, Seattle to me is one of the most beautiful big cities in North America when it's a nice day. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible city. And they're going to be in the 60s in Seattle with sunshine over the weekend. Looks like we could be in the 60s too. We're going to be by, bumping uh, up there. So look at that. Week. Look, at, look at Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I just love that stuff. And don't forget, daylight saving time kicks in on early Sunday morning. 2 o'clock Sunday morning becomes 3 o'clock Sunday morning, just like that. So we lose the hour of sleep, but we get the extra hour of sunlight in the afternoon. Oh, well. I don't like daylight saving. I've been on record on that.
My body is like a Stradivarius. It's a finely tuned instrument. And when it gets thrown off by daylight saving, then we switch back to standard in the fall. It just, by the time I get used to it, we switch the clocks again. Okay, so you go from Stradivarius to fiddle then, huh? Yeah, pretty okay, much. I got you. Yeah. Pretty much. Ten minutes after the hour, the passes are okie dokie. No problems at all. Going to get a little snow later on this afternoon, but right now, if you're heading to the Cascades, of course, use an automobile, and you have no advisories and no restrictions across the board on the big three. Bear and dry on I-90. Bear and dry on Stevens. Couple of patches of frost and ice. That's all you have to worry about there. Blue, it's looking good. Roadway is bare with some frost and ice in places, so the big three are no problems at all on this uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, forecast for the Mountain Pass today, sunshine. High of about 38 degrees. Couple of inches of snow expected tonight. We talked about how we might get a half an inch. They're going to get maybe two in the Cascades overnight tonight. However, Thursday and Thursday night, things are going to get dicey. We're looking at three to five inches of snow Thursday and an additional three to five inches Thursday night before we die down on Friday. Okay. And then the weekend's fine. Just like uh, the weekend's looking great everywhere, all over the Pacific Northwest. It's going to be quite a bit of sunshine, mild temperatures, no snow. I'm, I'm saying no socks on Monday. How's no that? socks Monday? No socks Monday. Okay, I'm holding it to you. All right. I'm holding it to you. <laughs> Uh, today, on this Wednesday, Steve is wearing socks. He is wearing shoes. He's wearing underwear, pants, a belt, a shirt, and an undershirt. You trust? I, I'm assuming so. And he'll have the news in one minute. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley, which still hasn't been canceled yet, regardless of how hard we try, <laughs> from Studio 2 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. <laughs> to celebrate every season with award-winning dining, full-service spa, and 170 waterfront guest rooms. Come experience our tradition of hospitality at Campbell's Resort on Lake Chelan. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. Good morning and welcome back to Wake Up with Anchee Valley for this Wednesday. It's March 7th. Again, I'm Steve Hare. Here's some of the stories we're following for you today. A 12-year-old Leavenworth area boy faces charges of felony harassment after he allegedly made some threatening comments to a fellow Cascade School District student last week. Now, the Wenatchee World reports the Chelan County Sheriff's Office was notified by the school district that the boy asked a, another student, quote, hey, do you want to help me shoot up the school, end quote. Well, the boy was expelled from the school and subsequently arrested and held overnight at the Chelan County Juvenile Jail. He's since been released uh, to his parents' custody. The World reports that the boy told deputies the comments were made as a joke and that he had no intentions to carry out the threat. He was not armed, but authorities say he did have access to firearms at his home. The boy will be arraigned on March 15th in Chelan County Juvenile Court. In a related story, uh, around 100 people packed into the Wenatchee High School Commons uh, earlier this week for a listening forum regarding school safety and gun violence, a story you first heard on NCW Life News yesterday morning. Uh, following the recent school shootings in Parkland, Florida, local Wenatchee area residents voiced their opinions on how the Wenatchee School District might move forward. Uh, the, uh, while most of the 21 people who spoke at the forum were against Army teachers, there was a wide range of options. I want to say that my oldest starts kindergarten in the fall. And so you better believe I'm following this issue. And you better believe that it's personal. And you better believe I'm going to fight. I know there's been some talk about metal detectors. And I want to point out that um, they're going to be effective in stopping a kid that wants to bring a gun to school for show and tell. But they're not going to be effective in stopping an active shooter. 
an active shooter is not going to stop to be patted down or whatever the process will be. And that is, if you think about it, that's our, our current situation, that's the current concern. What I would like to see instead is the district use that money for keypad entry at all schools. I understand some schools have them, Lincoln and Washington. I think that's a wonderful idea. All external doors are locked. You need to be buzzed in, all visitors, everybody. Um, I'd also like to see um, you use that money for bulletproof, uh, bulletproof glass and more SROs within the district, a lot more. Thank you. I, I do believe we need to harden, harden all the schools, and I think we need an armed guard at every school. And if it's me, I, I really think you need to be proactive. My own thought would be put an armed guard out there with a gun that's capable of taking down an active shooter, not a pistol, but something that he can shoot somebody that's out 50 yards shooting at him. It's dangerous every day leaving your house but you don't leave your house. And in my mind, when you're drowning, the solution is not to add water. <laughs> so I oppose the addition of more guns into the school. Now, do I think the district should be looking at architectural measures or defensive measures to make schools more defensible? To make it less likely that somebody may be able to enter the school uh, with a weapon? Yes, I do. Now those are but a few of the comments that were fielded by the school board Monday night. Uh, some other suggestions included having trained dogs on campuses, bulletproof glass and metal detectors. The entire school board was on hand for that meeting on Monday and told the crowd that they would be taking a look at all the suggestions to make schools safer and we'll come up with some other solutions very soon. Also bump stocks, the devices that essentially turn a semi-automatic rifle into a machine gun will soon be outlawed in the state of Washington. Governor Jay Inslee uh, signed a bill yesterday prohibiting the sale and use of bump stocks, which are a tool in the hands of a mass shooter. Uh, the perpetrator of the deadliest shooting in U.S. history, uh, the one in Las Vegas, used bump stocks, killing 58 people and injuring hundreds more. In fact, the bill Inslee signed yesterday makes it a crime to manufacture, sell, purchase, own, furnish, assemble, repair, loan, transport, or possess bump stocks. Essentially, it's a ban on that uh, weapon. The legislation, Senate Bill 5992, also increases the prison sentence for someone who uses a bump stock while committing a felony. Now, the new law directs the Washington State Patrol also to create a bump stock buyback program that allows people to relinquish their uh, bump stocks in exchange for $150 per device. The Washington State Patrol will run the program in coordination with local police agencies starting uh, on July 1st. Meanwhile, law enforcement officials who encounter bump stocks can seize them immediately under the emergency law. Washington also became the first state Monday to set up its own net neutrality requirements after U.S. regulators repealed Obama-era rules that banned Internet providers from blocking content or impairing traffic. Federal Communications Commission voted in December to gut U.S. rules that meant to prevent broadband companies such as Comcast, AT&T, and Verizon from exercising more control over what people watch and see on the Internet. At the bill signing uh, this week, Governor Inslee criticized Congress for not taking action on the issue. Now, the new law also requires Internet providers to disclose information about their management practices, performance, and commercial terms violators uh, would, uh, would uh, or violations, I should say, uh, would be enforceable under the state's Consumer Protection Act. Washington State also is poised to reestablish a state tourism program after the Senate passes a bill that creates a private-public partnership to fund it. And the bill has been in the works for a couple of years, first introduced in the House by 12th District Representative Kerry Condonna, and he talked about it, uh, well, two years ago with NCW Live News. So we put together a new program. Uh, we think it's politically uh, feasible. We, we're getting good buy-in. It's a simple $5 million investment, $5 million out of billions that we spend to uh, leverage about $30 million in revenue. That is a very worthwhile investment.
Okay, so what kind of a reaction are you getting from the industry, which has to really kind of pump up uh, the revenue part of this? Yeah, and uh, to sell this, we have to have kind of a two-to-one match where the industry is going to put up $10 million against the state's $5 million, and uh, they're going to have to step up to the plate because it's a use-it-or-lose-it kind of bill. Now, the measure is first introduced has changed uh, since it was first introduced last year. The new tourism agency was approved by the Senate on Monday. Washington State is one of only a few states that don't have a statewide tourism marketing program. The bill is now awaiting the governor's signature. But uh, good news, and I guess a feather in the cap for uh, Kerry Condotta. And of course, uh, passed the Senate with uh, Senator Brad Hawkins' vote as well. So it's unanimous, really, and had widespread support there in the legislature. And high time. The, uh, something here in the state of Washington. Session ends tomorrow. Does it not scheduled in tomorrow? It's I should scheduled say. in tomorrow. In fact, so. they did pass their capital supplemental budget. Okay. Yesterday. So that would probably would have been the biggest uh, hitch for not closing yeah. on time. And if that's out of the way, maybe they will actually, it's for the first time like in a long time, adjourn when they're supposed to. Although the controversy surrounding that law that proposes changes to the Public Records Act that would mm. exempt the House. Apparently, they reintroduced another House bill that's going to get a public hearing on that today. Oh, wow. So it's not over yet. Okay. Not over yet. Keep your fingers crossed that our lawmakers will be able to pack up their bags and go home on Friday. By the way, if you go to our website at ncwlive.com, we do have an updated story on the Public Records Act uh, legislation and uh, an explanation by Representative Mike Steele on why he voted in favor of the bill, uh, despite the fact that there was no public hearing or any debate on the bill. So again, uh, go to our website. We've also provided a link to the story on our Facebook page. So, Our website is chock full of information, right. entertainment, videos. This show you can watch on demand whenever you want. Why, I don't know, but you can. That's right. Lots of sports have been uh, loaded over the last couple of weeks. They're there for you to look at anytime you want. Our news, you can go back and look at our archives. You can look at individual stories. You can look at our, all of our shows, Street Talk and other stuff, Life with Lisa, Let's Learn, Arbiter of Stoke, uh, the 12th District. All of the local shows that we produce here are available on demand by going to ncwlife.com. You can't miss it. It's pretty cool. You can contact us. You can submit a news tip to us. Yeah. You can do all kinds of cool things. This this World Wide Web is really catching on, Steve. Well, it is, but you know, here at NCW Life News, we are local-centric, and we are starving for local news and regional news here around North Central Washington. And there's any number of ways you can contact us as well, folks. You can contact us by email. The address is news at ncwlife.com. You can contact any one of us, of course, uh, here at the station by calling 888-6295, that's 888-NCWL, and uh, I'd like to hear from you. And stop by and see Steve and I. We got the early shift for the KPQ Home Expo. We will be there on Friday that's right. uh, at noon when the doors open, and you and I will be hanging around the NCW Life Book uh, booth. Uh, we'll be there signing autographs. Um, you know, uh, if you want your picture taken with me, it's three dollars. Ah. If you want your picture taken with Steve and I together, it's just two dollars. There you go. So, and how much are you charging for an autograph for an eight by ten? Right now? Yeah, I, I mean at the home show, you're gonna at the expo, you're gonna you're gonna charge for. You know, I don't know. I don't yeah. know this year. This year, I think I, I think free autographs are okay. But okay. I never get asked. I might do what Babe Ruth did. He, whenever he went out in public, he had a stack of pre-autographed cards. They were mm -hmm. just small, little, like business size cards. It was his signature. He signed every one of them by hand. And so it had freed up a lot of time for him. He said, here's, yes, it's good to see you. Here's, you know, here's my autograph. Because that's all anybody wanted. Can Why I have Babe Ruth's autograph? Yeah. So there you go. Come by and see us at the Home Expo. Steve and I will be there. Uh, our, somebody from the staff, a couple people will be at our booth the entire time. You and I uh, got the early shift on uh, Friday. 12, and yeah, I'm we'll be there from 12 to 2. Yep, we'll be there from 12 to 2. Smiling, looking good. Steve will be fully dressed as he is right now. And then I'll be back at the Town Toyota Center early Saturday morning. I, th I think I have the Saturday shift as well. I yeah. can't remember. I Great. Maybe I should look. It's going to be a lot more fun than what we had to do. It was a real work. Yeah. Real work, real job when we were doing it for Cherry Creek Radio. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it's uh, the, the logistics of putting together that thing. I, kudos to those folks. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy at all to put that thing together, but it's a lot of fun. It's so a you're a little behind the scenes look today with your guest today? Yeah, Michelle Collins was on. She came in yesterday to tape it. We'll talk about the KPQ Home Expo. That's the second part of the show, segment number three, I guess, on this program, which I just made up. 25 minutes after they are big victory for the Wenatchee Wild. They're one game away of moving further down the road in the BCHL playoffs. Merritt got back into it, 
but they held on. We got highlights from that. We'll also got some Ichiro talk coming your way. The obscure holiday today in history, birthdays. Unfortunately, again, because of technical difficulties, we do not have another edition of Everyone is Entitled to Mike McNaughty's Opinion, but we'll still have that interview with Michelle Collins. It's all coming up in this Wednesday edition of Wake Up in Anchi Valley, live from Studio 4 in downtown Anchi on the NCW Life Channel. RLS Productions is proud to bring to the NCW Life Channel the Concerts in the Garden Summer Series held at Omi Gardens. The series features performances from Rare Earth's Peter Rivera, Heart by Heart, Two Slim and the Tail Draggers, The Infinity Project, The Wenatchee Swingin' Big Band, and a whole host of other great acts. Tune in Wednesdays at 1.30 and 7 p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. and 9 p.m. RLS Productions Concerts in the Garden Summer Series only on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian. And this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. Twenty-six minutes after the hour, clear skies, 25 degrees outside of our studios, thickening clouds and 50. Your forecast high today, rain and snow mix possible, spilling into early Friday morning and then nothing but sunshine Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's a good looking weekend heading our way. All right, sports, when it's wild, we're up in Merritt to take on the Centennials. Game three of the BCHL first round playoffs, the quarterfinals if you were. The Wild, of course, won the first two games at home last weekend. They were looking to take a commanding Three games to none lead in the best of seven series. Our checker had the call to the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. First period scored us, so we'll pick it up a minute into the second period. Here are your highlights. Rockets a pass over on the far side. Now in front for Arnold. He shoots, save, made, rebound, score! Cooper Zach knocking home the rebound. Back over to the midpoint from Monroe, and his crossing pass gets deflected into the corner. Court walks out in front. Shot. Well... The referee didn't signal it was a goal. The light went on. And the sense are celebrating. Weatherby's there. Out in front and rolled it right through the crease. Souter will chase it down. Back to the point for Zach. Tip score! Jasper Weatherby with the redirection. Cooper Zach firing the shot from the left point. And Jasper Weatherby standing right there at the glove side. Uh, Berger got a stick on it, chips it home, and the Wild retake the lead 2-1. It's going to be picked up by Zek, and he'll walk into the zone. He's in, shoots, he scores! Cooper Zek, and then he caught a high stick up around the neck after the fact. But Zek picked up the puck in open ice, just stepped in, split through the D, and just rifled the shot high. And a clean face-off win comes back to Monroe. Shoveled over, shot, tipped, loose, puck score. Souter cuts into the zone, across, shot, he scores! Lucas Souter with a nice drag moved into the zone, cut across. Vanderbeck will dig it out though, up high for Demon, he shoots, he scores! Slava Demon rips the top corner. And here come the Centennials with a pass over on the right side, Goslin tries to hop in, back across, shot. And a score, Stocky from Goslin. Save made, rebound. Zorn shoots and he scores. And cleared up off a body of Wicks and chipped out the center. Vanderbeck is there, guides it ahead. Slapped by Weatherby over to the near boards. But Risto comes up with it, fires it in, punched away by Park. To the end wall it goes and the time expires. Wild finish, if you pardon the pun. Three goals in the final three minutes of the game, but the Wild hold on for the victory, as you can see there. And a three games to none lead. They can look for the sweep tonight, 7 o'clock also in Merritt. Well, the Ichiro Watch in Peoria continues. Seattle Mariners spring training facility. Over 50 Japanese journalists on hand. Only Ichiro didn't show up. Ichiro is still in Seattle going through the physical thing. His, his, uh, his jersey was hanging up in the locker. Everything was ready to go. His interpreter was there. Everybody was ready, but Ichiro 
didn't show up. He's still in Seattle. He still needs to pass his physical, and then he'll head on down to Arizona and officially be introduced as the Mariners' new old outfielder, if you will. By the way, on the field yesterday, Seattle dropped to five and six on the spring so far after falling to the Rockies. The final was three to two. Mike Zunino hit a solo home run. Robinson Cano drove in two, but it wasn't enough. Colorado takes the win. Seattle hosts Oakland today in Peoria. Marco Gonzalez, you remember that guy? Used to pitch for the Apple Sox. He gets the start. And of course, the Ichiro watch will continue. Hopefully, he'll make it in camp and get a little baseball in today. <clears throat> Good to have him back in the North Great Northwest. 30 minutes after the hour, the obscure holiday of the day today. We don't know why it's on March 7th, but it is. Today is National Cereal Day. Mmm, cereal. And a lot of people complain about cereal not being healthy for you, but it's a lot better than the alternative. The two alternative, which is nothing at all for breakfast, or what they used to eat before cereal was invented, and that was just meat. People just ate way too much meat for breakfast, and finally, they figured out a way that you could have a healthy breakfast Courtesy of our good friends, uh, Mr. Kellogg, John Kellogg, along with his brother Will, uh, decided that we can do better, and we can do meatless breakfast, and we probably should. Uh, the first big breakfast, of course, the first big cereal was cornflakes, and then Charles Williams Post got into the act, and out came Post Toasties and Grape Nuts, and eventually, uh, in the early part of the last century, uh, Bran Flakes came out in 1915, Wheaties made its debut in 1924, Rice Krispies in 1928. That's right. Rice Krispies is 90 years old. I think I have a 90-year-old box of Rice Krispies at home. And then the 50s, out came Frosted Flakes and Tricks at the market and Cocoa Puffs and Life uh, Cereal, you know. Mikey, he likes it. Fun facts about cereal. The cereal industry uses 800 million pounds of sugar a year. That's a lot of sugar. And the average American consumes about 160 bowls of cereal a year. Happy Cereal day. I'm a, I'm a uh, uh, Raisin Bran guy. I'm a, that's my favorite cereal, Raisin Bran. Although I went through my Wheaties phase when I was a kid, 32 minutes after the hour, today in history. March 7th, 1876, patent number 174,695 went to Alexander Graham Bell for his invention called the telephone. It was originally called the Watson Calling Machine. <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell is granted a patent for his invention, the telephone, on this date in 1876. That's actually from a movie still, the story of Alexander Graham Bell, which came out in the 20s. But that's about the closest thing that, that the telephone actually looked like back in 1876. And on this date in 1986, 39 days after the shuttle exploded shortly after takeoff, the crew of the Challenger, the crew cabin, was discovered by the USS Pervert Preserver on the ocean floor. It took them 39 days to find it, but they did. All of the bodies of the seven astronauts were returned to their families, and then small portions were all buried together in one location at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C., as you see there. 39 days after the shuttle exploded, they finally found the cabin and the crew and the bodies of those seven heroes. And at 33 minutes after the hour, birthdays. Happy 68th birthday to Franco Harris. There he is. He still has Super Bowl records. In fact, his Super Bowl career totals of 101 rushes and 354 yards are still Super Bowl records. He has four rings, all of them with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bad divorce from Pittsburgh back in 1984. His contract was expired. He wanted to re-sign with the Steelers. He wanted to play one more year so we could break Jim Brown's career rushing record. But instead, during spring training camp, of course, the, during the fall camp, the Steelers cut him loose. Um, he was a free agent. He was signed by the Seahawks. He played about half a year for the Seahawks and finally hung it up. But his, uh, his, he, was, uh, he and the Steelers did not get along very well for about 10 years. They eventually kissed and made up the great Franco Harris, is 68 years old today. Walter White celebrates a birthday. Well, the guy who played Walter White. Brian Cranston, Walter White on Breaking Bad is probably his best known role. Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series four times. That's pretty good, including three times in a row. Of course, uh, I, I, I first remember uh, paying attention to him in Saving Pri Private Ryan. He was in that movie. Little Miss Sunshine, Argo. He's also been a very accomplished director. Brian Cranston is 62 years old today. And uh, we probably all know her as Pam Beasley. Jenna Fisher from The Office is 44 years old today. She's starring in a brand new uh, show that's going to be coming out here on ABC in just a couple of weeks. Jenna Fisher is 44 
years old today. 35 minutes after the hour. Once again, uh, we don't, we, we are unable to bring to you. Everyone is entitled to Mike Bignati's opinion. We apologize for that. Hopefully by tomorrow, we'll be able to have one for you. And by the way, we'll have a whole bunch of brand new commentaries from Michael coming up in the next couple of weeks. Looking forward to that. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's my interview with Michela Collins from Cherry Creek Media. Talk about the KPQ Home Expo it is this weekend. That's coming up next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley live from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. The relationship between the lifetime warranty and our service department is our service department's award-winning and they keep people's cars running for longer. I've had customers where they were waiting for their car to die and it just wouldn't die because our service department was able to keep it running. For longtime customers that are gonna maybe have a new driver in the family in the next four or five years, the lifetime warranty is powerful. You're always gonna have protection. The NCW Live Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's learn. Guada TV. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And the Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel is your local TV station. Dear Mary Maids, just got home from a trade show and I didn't have time to pick up the house. Kids made chili. Jeff did a mud run. Oh, and Winston shredded Teddy's bed. Again. Please clean it the best you can. Oh, except for the statue Max made for me. Thanks, Abby. Hi, Abby. Clean kitchen. Clean bath. Clean floor. Naughty cat. Poor Teddy. The statue is precious. You should keep it forever. See you next time. Merry Maids. Skillsource specializes in assessing and guiding youth, adults, and laid off workers who want to improve their skills. Here you can attend in-depth workshops to assess skills and interests, make career plans, and learn computer basics. Learning centers provide eligible youth and adults individualized computer-assisted basic education. Vocational training is arranged with approved providers like community colleges or on the job with businesses. Don't wait any longer. Let's get working on the future you've been dreaming about. If you're stuck trying to find the perfect beer for you, look no further than Badger Mountain Brewing. We specialize in creating tantalizing craft beers that will soothe any picky taste buds and will satisfy your cravings. Check out everything from our amazing honey blonde that will appease even the most finicky taster or a delicious frothy stout for dark beer lovers. Experience them all at Badger Mountain Brewing. Every golfer aims to play their best and smart golfers turn to the golfer's edge to get the golfer's edge. PGA professional Ed Payne has you covered from tee to green. You can work on your swing or play 18 in air conditioned to comfort on the golf simulator. Tanya's Corner has all the apparel the golfer needs at sale prices. And Ed can even rebuild your favorite set of clubs or custom make you a brand new set. Ask how you can qualify for a free 30 minute lesson at the Golfer's Edge on mission between Kittitas and Yakima. Hi, I'm Blair from Works, your workout prescription. Have you ever started an exercise program and struggled to keep it going? So what if I told you that with this MyZone device, I could increase your chances of self-motivated exercise adherence by over 200%. Combine that with an exercise prescription specifically for your level of readiness, we'll increase it even more. And that's our new member success system. It's $99. It's exclusively at Works. It includes your MyZone belt. Works. Yourworkoutrx.com. And welcome back to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. It's a Wenatchee Valley tradition going on its 41st year. It's gone through any number of name changes, but the genesis, the gist of it is just the same. It's the first big spring party of the year. It's the biggest spring party of the year. It is the KPQ Home Expo. And joining me from Cherry Creek Media, Michela Collins. I pronounced your name correctly? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's an interesting, Michela. Yeah. Is that, that's like uh, neither one Ma or the other. Michelle, Michael, and Michaela are already taken, so I just, you know, this, uh, we all have the same name in my family. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a unique name. I've never seen that before. <laughs> you kids ready? I, I worked at KPQ, just, uh, you know, in, 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 for full disclosure. 
And I did, I just counted this, I did 12 of these things, and it is a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's a big event for us, um, but we've gotten down to a science now, and now that we have you guys, now you said you did 12, and so now and we got uh, NCW Life and Local Tell sponsoring our event, and uh, it's a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it, and if, if, you know, just for us to be a vendor and be the presenting mm -hmm. sponsor, and I'm talking about Local Tell and NCW Life Channel, that's a lot of work just for us. I can't imagine what you, well, I can't imagine what you guys are going through because I was there. Yeah, but it's um, it's fun and, uh, you know, we've, we've done it many years now, so it's, it's not too much work. I think I, I'm just looking forward to it. And it's a good opportunity for businesses, advertisers to be able to meet the community and have them ask the questions that um, that they want to ask. And, it's a great opportunity. 41st, and my guess is there have been some people who've done all 41 of these. And I don't mean people showing up, I mean vendors. I wouldn't be surprised at all. You know, probably uh, one good thing is Swimworld is back. Oh, okay. Um, and so they, that's exciting, and they did it for many years. But, you know, I, I haven't even been alive 41 years, so I'm not <laughs> sure which ones have been there that long. But it's exciting that we got Swimworld back in the show, and then we have some new vendors too. Such as? Uh, you know, Community Glass is back in, is for in the show, and uh, Valley Tractor. And uh, you know, lots of new people, but those are you know people who, who do advertise with us and who are now being in the show. Inside and outside, as usual, there's usually two or three things going on outside oh, the county center. Oh yeah, the whole front. We block off the two lanes, and so you can expect to see um, Harley Davidson's Owen Cycle. Of mm -hmm. course, they do their demo days. Uh, we have a tiny home. Of this year, it's going to be uh, fully completed. Last year, we had just a shell. So it's exciting you guys can come out. Um, actually, no, sorry, the tiny homes are inside. Okay. This they're year. that small. Well, yeah, they're, uh, <laughs> and inside we have that much space in the town Toyota Center. So we, we actually, that was a mistake, we have them inside. But the whole outside is, is full of vendors. We've got, you know, old hickory sheds, boats. Mm -hmm. um, all kinds of people out front. It's so, something for everyone. Yeah, and uh, we'll even have Ag Supply back doing their grilling and demo days. So, so outside's a party in above itself. The green egg, I hope, right? Yeah, the green oh, egg. Good. So good. they'll have their samples back, and it'll be fun before you even get inside. You'll you'll be there. It is the uh, <laughs> it's like the end of the winter, beginning of spring party again. I have been having involved in this for many years. It's your chance to catch up with people you haven't seen for a long time. Sometimes for the for people who are snowbirds or back in Wenatchee after spending the winter in Palm Springs or Arizona and they're back and the first thing you do is you go to the KPQ Home Expo and you start running into all your old friends. Yeah, I think the whole community really shows up. Um, majority of the vendors are local businesses um, and so it's great that the community comes out and supports them and uh, you know, gets information and you know buys products for their home, or just find out you know different services. Uh, it, we have everything, you know, stuff for the yard, stuff for your inside. So yeah, it kicks it off, and you're right. Oh, sorry, interrupt you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, <laughs> no, it's a just good way to get your home, and it's not just your home, but anything you need for your life. Uh, come to our show, and we have something for everybody. And Kids some, yep, too. And some people come back to see the same vendors every year because this is where they get their blinds or this is where they get their cookware every year they come back and they see the same people yeah, who come by and just to, they get caught up and they they buy their dutch oven or whatever it is exactly i need to get my sheets from the, the yes. sheets oh the sheet lady yeah the sheet lady i am i need some new sheets it's been like four or five years since that's someone that's like the billion count sheet right right yeah so um but yeah we have a lot of new different you know products for the home we have the old returning people um so it's Master Gardener seminars fun. again? Yep. Okay. Master Gardener seminars. Um, so what else we got? No, not that new this year. We got Weinstein. They're going to be uh, launching a new product. Oh. Ah. And uh, they're also doing a long shot contest. Yeah. For what, is, what is that? What's this long shot contest? Well, What's they have their own uh, beat the buzzer promotion going on, and so okay. at the KPQ Home Expo, there is an opportunity to qualify for for that contest, and so where you you can win a thousand dollars. Oh. So they're going to be doing you know, long basketball shots. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and then you can uh, qualify to win. So that was just an extra. So that'll be fun. We got Lowe's Kids Zone. Um, they're doing plant a seed and also making bracelets um, and some other things. So there's there's things for the oh, also a uh, cupcake chick from Food Network show Cupcake oh. Wars. Uh -huh. So she is going to be doing a decorating. Uh, Contest, but I think it's like a seminar, so the kids can come, you know, learn from you know Food Network stars, 
It's pretty neat. It's kind of like a mini celebrity like you yeah. in our community. <laughs> come eat come emphasis, cupcake chick. Emphasis on mini. <laughs> you make that uh, absolutely. Uh, cooking demonstrations. Um, how many of those are going on? Do you know? Uh, just, uh, just one this year okay. besides, I think, the sampling. So we mm -hmm. have uh, probably, I think, just the one cooking demonstrations guy. Okay. And then, you know, there might be some other people doing samples, but not, not the pot. There's only one pot and pan guy. Okay. Uh, noon on, on Friday, you ready? Is yeah. everybody ready? Yeah, we'll be ready by Thursday. Okay. The Thursday's the load-in day, right? Thursday's load-in day, Friday, just show up. Show up. With a smile and noon some to business seven, cards. Friday, what are the hours? Noon to yes, seven Friday. Yes, noon to seven on Friday, nine to seven on Saturday, and then 11 to four on Sunday. So you got three days to figure it out. Yes. So what a lot of people do, and I've, I've experienced this before, they will show up either on Friday and Saturday, and they'll usually walk around the entire mm -hmm. deal, almost every booth. You'll, you'll walk by at least about every booth. Yes. And then they'll go back on Sunday yes. and make their deal or decide this is what I'm going to buy. And, they, and you can buy it right there. Right. It's a selling show. Um, lots of, I mean, they sell Harleys at the show. So there's big ticket items. I think they almost sold boats. There's, there's, you can buy jacuzzis. You can buy anything um, right there at the show. And yes, you're right. Sunday is the day where um, so the, there's return people mm -hmm. who are coming back who maybe were thinking about it. And they were like, now, you know what? I really do want those sheets. If you're looking for a specific <laughs> item, like you need a fence built or you want yes. a hot tub or yes. you want a lawnmower, do you get like a map and a program so you mm -hmm. say so you know exactly where you're going because it's it's a big place. It's you a big you event. do if you have a spurt. Uh, we had in the very center of our brochure is a list of all the vendors and there's a map. So if you have somebody in mind, um, you can search them out. But um, we do do a passport, so we we do. Uh, and you've been doing that for years. You go couple to all years. The radio booths, right? Yes, we have our radio stations, and so you stop around and get your passport stamped for a chance to win a, a gift card to buy Mart seven hundred fifty dollars. So it's a pretty good chance of, of winning Yeah. Um, to just go around and get a stamp. Pretty easy. So, uh, I mean, I think it's not huge. I think most people do walk the whole show and find what they're looking for. It is a commitment of time and bring good shoes. I discovered yes. that years ago. Bring yes. good shoes. Yes. Especially so. for people who are going to be there all day like you and me. Yeah. 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 So it's a, it's a lot of fun. And it, it's the 41st. I yeah. remember when this first started, it was in the Pioneer Junior High Gymnasium. Believe it or not, it was that small. Then they moved it to the Wenatchee High School Commons, and then eventually to the Wenatchee Convention Center, when that's where it was at for years. Yeah. It was at the Wenatchee Convention Center, and then they outgrew that, and now it's been at the Town Toyota Center. Yeah, for how long do you know? Uh, the year after the Town Toyota Center opened. Okay. That I remember. I remember the first um, uh, home expo they did at the Town Toyota Center because it was the first free event open to the public after the Town Toyota Center opened. So for a lot of people, it was the first time to walk inside this big building and take a look at it. Awesome. That's so, pretty cool of us yeah. to make that opportunity, make dreams happen. Yeah. But yeah. it is still free this uh -huh. year, and so we're, you know, it's there, it's no reason not to go. It's free to the public, so. And you get a goodie bag when you show up? You get yeah. A thing, I, you get the program think, to get a little. I think you guys are. Are uh, we all proud of that? Guys, yeah, so. you always do our goodie bags. So. I should probably do my homework. <laughs> no, I think you do that, but <laughs> it's good because uh, you guys are our, our uh, presenting sponsor, so yeah. we appreciate you. I'm proud to be that. And we're uh, if you need uh, internet or um, you know fiber-based internet, uh, you want to drop by our booth. You can't miss our booth. It's huge, the local tub booth, and we'll be there. The NCW Life Channel uh, family will be there. We're going to have a little. Uh, we're going to have a news set. So people can come by and, and pretend they're a local television celebrity. Yeah, that's so fun. Accent I love on, that. I hope I still have a job on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, is there? You have a Facebook page. It's, yeah, so it, yeah. It's a KPQ Home Expo, um, and then. Uh, yeah, there's uh, anywhere you go online, the hours should be correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, there. there's Don. There's Don West, Don my good West. buddy Don. He'll uh, be live um, doing his show on Friday afternoon. I'm so sorry to there's hear about a lot that. of. I'm kidding. There's I no, love Don. A lot of people come into the station wanting to meet him, uh -huh. and so this is their chance. And so sometimes he's on air, but I'm like, come to the home show. You can meet Don West. Uh, before I cut you loose, um, for people specifically for the Master Gardener Seminar, they want to learn something from Bonnie or something about growing a vegetable garden. Where do they find the schedule on when the Master Gardeners are going to do their specific seminars? It's in the brochure, but also okay. we um, we printed some large signs at the info as soon as people okay. walk in, and then uh, so we printed a couple of posters, and so we'll put them probably in front of the Master Gardeners, mm -hmm. and then at the front entrance, and then the brochure. Cool. So. And can you you know can you get a bite to eat while you're there because you're going to be there? The concessions will be yes. open, so you can grab yes. some meat. Okay. Yes. You can you can be there all day long. 
Good. Good. Did we touch on everything? Did we get everything done? Um, yes. I think we got everything. I think we did. I think we got everything. Okay. So the place to be on March 9th, Friday, March 9th at noon is the uh, is the um, town Center. TTC. And by the way, you'll you've done this before. There will be a line of people. Yes. Ready to get in at like 11:30. Yes, they want to be early, which is yeah. good because some people want to go do the show, but they don't want to deal with the uh, crowds. Uh -huh. So they want to come in and get in right. early. And so. if you show up at 4:01 on Sunday, you're out of luck. Yeah. Don't do that. That means you just wasted too much time, all right? Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> Thank and we you. Will, I will see you all weekend long. All right, looking forward to it. All right, we'll be right back right after this. High School Sports is back this spring on the NCW Life Channel. Do you like baseball? We've got you covered with the Wenatchee Panthers and the Eastmont Wildcats. How about softball? We have you covered there, too, with fast pitch action right here. How about lacrosse? Yep, got you covered there, too, with the Wenatchee Valley Thunder. And, of course, there's boys soccer. Whatever your interest, we've got you covered on your home for high school spring sports, the NCW Live Channel. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Hi, Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. When you think of Alpine Air in Wenatchee, think of professional, friendly customer service for all your heating and cooling needs. Alpine Air partners with carrier manufacturers of some of the best heating and air conditioning equipment available today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Visit our store in Wenatchee, meet our people, see our shop. Heat and air call Alpine Air, 662-6846. Collins Fashions has a fabulous selection of clothing, handbags, jewelry, and shoes for all events in your life, such as work, errands, celebration, travels, etc., etc. And our professional caring staff will assist you in coordinating your wardrobe and choose a perfect gift for that special someone. Our many fabulous brands include Joseph Ribkoff, Tribal, Jag Jinx, Tommy Bahama, and we are your Brighton headquarters for North Central Washington. We are grateful for our wonderful customers, and we look forward to seeing you at Collins, where fun and fashion meet in downtown Wenatchee. The all-new Yamaha Wolverine X4 offers four times the proven off-road capability, four times the comfort, and four times the confidence to deliver four times the excitement on your next outdoor adventure. Welcome back to this Wednesday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, here live again from Studio 7 in downtown mm -hmm. Wenatchee. Dan Koontz alongside uh, Steve Hare. Uh, thanks for coming back in. I know you're busy. You're in there gathering news and disseminating oh, yeah. news and putting together. some stories for later this afternoon. Good. Good. Absolutely. So what we thought we'd do, because we have a little time, we'll hit Control, Alt, Delete and kind of end this show where we began this show, but we have different cameras now up and ready to go. Yeah, for those of you just joining us, uh, this is something we do at the outset of every program. Mm -hmm. Courtesy of Local Tel Sky Fi High Speed Wireless Network. We have about 40 cameras scattered all over North Central Washington and um, many of them in and around the Wenatchee Valley proper. And we're adding to that network too, as I understand, in, Constantly. Uh, in Grant County. Yes, in yes, Grant, yeah. yes, as we branch over to the east to Grant County. So that, of course, is the Wenatchee Valley. It's a beautiful day today, but once again, we'll do the forecast here in just a little bit. Uh, clouds are going to be thickening up as the day progresses and by the time this day ends and you call it a day and head on home, going to be mostly cloudy skies and a little bit of rain and snow. We'll get to the forecast in just a little bit. So good morning, Wenatchee Beautiful and job. East Wenatchee and Sunny Slope and everybody else we can see there on this beautiful Wednesday. Camera two. Now, these are all be new cameras, different from the ones we did about an hour ago. They're all live shots. All live shots. i got to say that's the, that's the Two Rivers camera. Uh, that is the Lake Wenatchee area pointing up towards the White River and the White different River Different angle, Valley. isn't it? Yeah, it's pointed the exact opposite direction, pretty much the exact opposite direction. I've been up to that tower. To get to that tower, it's pretty interesting. You've got to drive through a rock quarry, and then you have to park, and then you have to get in one of those ATVs and drive up 
about a 70 degree angle to get up to that tower. Wow. And then the tower itself is about 300 feet tall. Wow. It's pretty cool. So you can be out there in Lake Wenatchee in the middle of nowhere in this beautiful rustic nature filled scenery and get high speed wireless internet. Is that pretty cool? Pretty neat. That's yeah, pretty This technology pretty thing is pretty awesome. Camera number three will take us to, I want to say that's the Manson Water Tower. Uh, it is, and that looks like it's pointing up the lake instead Correcto. of down the lake. Yeah, thank you. For, I'm getting pretty good at this. You are getting good at it. Good morning, Manson. Look at all those orchards sitting there ready to wake up and start growing stuff. Get them cherries and apples up and running. Won't be long. Won't be long at all. And camera number four will take us to, well, that's beautiful downtown, downtown Wenatchee, Wenatchee, Washington. Is that from the Cascadian? That's from the Cascadian. We have two of them, one that points south, that one there that you see, and the other one that points to the north. You see that grain tower there? It's been around forever. I wonder if they still use that. Which one now? The one, the, the big the big building. You can't miss it, Steve. Yeah, yeah. yeah do they still use that? And that grain tower? Is that I think a grain, grain tower? Yeah, it's a grain tower. Do yeah. they still use it? i to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know either. If you know, get a hold of us. Yeah. Give us a call. We'll find out together. What so far soliciting our viewers to help us out seems to work pretty well because, of course, we heard from Rod Rognes and we found out what that mountain was at that's the end right. of Billy Goat. So that's always a cool deal. Mount Kalispell. Yes, with a C, we might add, with a C. Um, getting ready for baseball season. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm all ready. I'm yep. already just uh, what a little less than what a month away. Yeah, Mariners start. Mariners have one of the first uh, opening days. They're like mm -hmm. on the 29th or 30th. The I home say. opener this year. Home opener. Yep. Good. They yeah. they adjust the schedule because the, the the teams that have open air stadiums in the Northeast don't really get going. Uh, they're usually on the road. Uh, of course, Seattle we have the umbrella, the big the big roof mm -hmm. over Safeco Field, so they can play any time. But places like Yankee Stadium and City Field and Fenway Park and the ballpark in Philadelphia, they don't want to be playing in April because the weather can be pretty nasty. But yeah. if you know, if you have a dome stadium or a stadium that's covered, you're going to play baseball regardless of the weather. Sure. So, so the Mariners have a have a front stacked schedule this year. Yeah, it should be uh, should be interesting. I not. Sure. I mean, how the schedule works this year. Uh, you know, traditionally it's been just their Western Division. Uh, it's the same as it usually is. Yeah. I don't like that. Well, that's, why not? It, it, I think it should be. You know, it should be more uh, more a variety of teams that they that they shouldn't keep it just in their own division for the first part because. You know, if the Mariners are no good, they're going to be 10 games out by the time we get to May. <laughs> Baseball you know? is a marathon, not a sprint. It's 162 games. That's a lot of baseball. Remind yeah. me to, to teach you my special pitch. We have spring sports coming up, too. Yeah, we got a lot of spring sports. You can go to our uh, website. You can go to our Facebook page. You can find out our spring sports schedule. We're going to do uh, something this year that we have not done in years past. We're going to do um, softball, both Eastmont and Wenatchee softball. We oh, haven't cool. been able to do it for technical reasons, but now we can. In addition to that, we'll do Wildcat and Panther baseball. We'll do, um, uh, we got lacrosse. We'll be doing lacrosse and a lot of soccer, too. Wenatchee and Eastmont soccer coming up. Always been a hotbed of soccer around here. Yeah, Wenatchee is a soccer community. No question soccer about it. Really getting good. Yeah, yeah. Wenatchee is a is a is a uh, is a soccer town, mm -hmm. and I'm all for that. I can tell you that much. Uh, real quickly, stories we're working on for the news. Well, coming up, uh, we reported earlier in the week about this adventure park uh, that a developer wants to build up in the Leavenworth area. Apparently getting some pushback. There's a change.org survey that's going out uh, in opposition to that project. We'll have more on that coming up. Also, it's election season, and uh, people are filing for candidacy with the State Public Disclosure Commission. A few more names added to that list that we'll share with you today as well. And a reminder that the 60-day short legislative session is supposed to end tomorrow. That'll that's be right. day number 60. Um, we're thinking it will probably happen, but my guess is there'll be some last second bills and last second flurry of activity, and we'll keep a close eye on what's going on in Olympia. Correction on that one uh, heads up I gave you on the public hearing on that one measure regarding uh, uh, public records uh -huh. law. Uh, that was not the case. It was oh, a different okay. bill, and now that has even been dropped, so they've uh, canceled the public hearing. I am holding out hope that our lawmakers will be back in the big city on Friday. So I hope it's so. And if that's the case and they wrap it up in 60 days, we will certainly have a, a, a legislative review with uh, our current lawmakers. We'll have that's something right. for you next week. At least the two House members. Yeah. 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 But we'll also yeah. be uh, reaching out to our state senator, Brad Hawkins, for his recap of the session. Weather forecast. Again, lots of sunshine today, and then it thickens up. The clouds will. And by the time you uh, are done with the day today, it'll be mostly cloudy skies. I have about 50. We do have a slight chance of some light snow. Overnight tonight into Thursday, half an inch maybe, 
of total accumulation, but as you can see with Thursday's afternoon high of 52, which is above normal, it's not going to last very long. And then another high pressure ridge will begin to build up, and we have nothing but gobs of gooey good sunshine Friday, Saturday, Ooh. Sunday, and Monday. It is Pushing a good 60 there on yeah, Monday. Yeah, good looking weekend. Passes are fine, by the way. No advisories, no restrictions. They will be getting some snow this afternoon, tonight, and most of the day on Thursday. Heads up on that. Tomorrow, my guest will be Paul Atwood, who is directing the Wenatchee High School production of The Wedding Singer. Oh, boy. Paul will be on this show tomorrow. Everybody have yourself a great Wednesday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.